Hi, it's Will from StormTheCastle.com, and here's another little project that I'm going to do. It's a radio-controlled airplane. Kind of nice. It's something I've actually never done, and I've been wanting to do for a while. So I'm going to be on my website. I'm going to be doing some radio-controlled airplanes, maybe helicopters, different projects related to that. I've got a few ideas for some projects I'm going to do. But I bought my first airplane. This one cost me $38. I got it on Amazon.com, and it's kind of nice. And it's kind of a beginner's airplane, remote control. But um, there's a few things about it I like. One is the price. It's pretty inexpensive. And it's almost fully assembled. There's a little bit of assembly I'll have to do. So and I'll show you a little bit about that. How I do it. Here's the airplane here. The fuselage. There's the wing. Or the wings. Some parts, some spare propellers and wheels and the various things. The uh, thing about propellers is, <clears throat> from what I've read, is if you're going to do remote control airplane stuff, you always get extra propellers because they break easy. The um, controller, up and down, right and left, the transmitter. So this is how you'll how I'll control the airplane. So if you've done remote control airplanes, it's kind of beginner stuff. But if you haven't done it, you might want to see what I do. I'll show you a little bit about how I put it together, and I'll take it out for a test flight. A couple of things. <clears throat> if you're going to buy something like this, you have to be very careful of batteries and how it charges, what kind of batteries it needs. This one comes with an interesting little, this one is the, uh, it's called the Night Flyer. It's got little LEDs, little lights on the back, see? Little light you can see here on the tail, kind of nice, kind of cute. This one comes with this neat little device that I like. The, the, this is the battery pack for the airplane, it goes right in the airplane, and it actually recharges by plugging it right into your transmitter here, which is nice. It's a little cord that goes from this to that. So you're out in the field somewhere. You don't want to have to bring this back home to recharge it. You plug it right into this to recharge it, and then you're ready to uh, fly your airplane some more. So that's kind of a neat little thing. But this, this, this particular one takes eight AA batteries. So if you're buying a remote control airplane, electric style, make sure you either... It either comes with the batteries you need for your transmitter and for your plane, or you get them. So that's just something to think about because it does put it does bring up the cost. So I'm going to do a little bit of work with this airplane, put it together, take it out for a flight, and I'll see, show you how that looks. Thanks. And I'm going to be doing more radio control airplane stuff, maybe helicopter. Or I've got some project ideas. And so this one's so this particular one is. I'll also have stuff on my website about this. I'll have pictures, and I'll show you how it's assembled. If you want to get into remote control airplanes, this might be a good one to uh, start out with because it's reasonably inexpensive. Megatech is the name of the company, and this one is the radio controlled lighted airplane. Okay, here I'm going to show you a little bit about this model airplane. Um, <clears throat> you can see that I've already taken it out for some runs for some flights, so. It's taking a little bit of damage, you got a little bit of dirt on it, but um, it's held up well. Uh, the fuselage here is made of plastic, and the wing is made of uh, like a styrofoam, kind of like a foam material. But it's, it's held up well. The lights work, it flies. did pretty good. Uh, building it, as far as building it goes, there's not a whole lot to this particular model, which is kind of nice if you're a beginner to model rockets. You might want to start with one that's not too complicated. You put the wheels in it. You know, you install the battery in the battery pack here. And uh, one thing is this this cover here will come off. You've got to make sure that's snapped in tight. So I had lost the cover and had to find it so I could still have it. So when, if you're doing any kind of a model rocket that's going to fly, it's a few things to think about. So, you know, put the wings on, pr put the propeller on. Just It just slides right on nice and tight. Uh, the wheels, the battery and the battery cover, and then the wings. The wings go like this. On this particular model, which I believe is similar to a lot of models, is you snap the wings in place like that, and they snap into place. There's little lines that you match up. And then you put rubber bands in a crossing pattern like this. So there we go. Now, I noticed that um, after a few flights, that the rubber bands bite into the wings here a little bit. 
So you might want to be careful of that and watch for something like that. Even put a little bit of cellophane tape under there to keep the wings, the integrity of the wings well. So that thing's ready to fly again and be recharged. Here's a, one uh, nice thing is, I'm not sure if I showed you, but when you are flying it, the turning left and right is by this little servo here, this little mechanism, this rudder goes back and forth, which is kind of nice. So you're turning left and you're turning right. And you control that on your transmitter. This, this particular one is controlled by, by speed, so there's no, there's no mechanisms that make it go up and down. It just automatically goes up and down, and you can control that height and dives and, and climbs by uh, the, the speed of the engine. You, you turn it on, you turn it off, and you let it go. So I flew it. It flew pretty well. I got some nice flights out of it. I recharged the batteries. It took about 10 minutes. And then when I went to fly it again, I didn't have any success on my second set of flights. I believe it's because the wind was picking up. So if you're going to fly something like this or any kind of beginner's model airplane, I'd recommend you try to get out in in uh, very in, in, in a conditions with no wind or as little wind as possible. It makes a big difference. So, But I had some nice flights, and I get a little bit of footage. But looking over the footage of the flying, um, I didn't get a really whole lot of good footage. I put the camera on a tripod and didn't really focus on the camera, but I got a little bit there, but I got some decent flights out of it, it was kind of nice, I went round and around, I did some dives, and did some climbing, and uh, people, I was at the local park, and people were coming over to me, and watching, and, and talking about it, and they enjoyed it, so, as far as the first time goes, this thing's ready to fly again, I'll be taking it out for some more flights, so I can learn some more, and practice some more, and then I'll be getting another airplane, probably a bigger one, a more powerful one, to continue on with the model rockets. So I'm going to be starting a whole series of model rocket stuff, uh, excuse me, model airplane stuff on my site, if you're interested. And uh, I'll post more stuff and more videos on that. Here, I, I also noticed, too, that flying advice is propellers. I broke a couple of propellers, so get extra propellers if you can. And if you want to give this particular one a, a try, mixed results, it was pretty good. I got some decent flights out of it. But if the wind kicks up, I had a hard time with it, so... But it's held up. It's still it's still doing good, and I crashed it oh, more than a few times. So uh, so here's coming up next is a little bit of footage of the airplane lights and a little bit of footage of the me flying it around in the local park. Thanks. There's a nice shot of it with the lights in the dark. It's kind of cool.